we've got a lot to get into. Ian Rappaport will join us a little later on the program. Logan Ryan of the Giants will join us a little later on the program. We'll get into Daniel Jones, maybe mix in a little Jets. Got to get into the Rockefeller Christmas tree lighting last night. Got some thoughts on that. We'll get into that too. And most importantly, Moose's triumphant return to courtside seats at the Garden tonight. Courtside Gary. And courtside Gary's got, I was talking to him off the air. Oh, yeah. He's got something that's uh, brewing as well. Special surprise? No, no, not a special surprise tonight. Just something that... He, I'll let him explain. I think he's going to try and chime in a little bit later on the program. Oh, well, now I'm really intrigued. Oh, it is. It's pretty good. It's what, pretty are you going like, to shoot a played, halftime shot well, and try to win a car? A, we played a massive role in this. No, no, it's not a halftime shot. It has nothing to do with the game tonight. It's something to deal with him. But we'll get into that, um, and he'll explain a little bit later on. But, right. Maggie, as we are all expecting, you know, come midnight last night, you know, I was watching some of the coverage Ravage and Company last night on ESPN as uh, we're inching closer and closer to midnight last night, and we get the – the lockout MLB owners unanimously agreed to locking out the players. No more signings. None of that. Stroman will get in hit signing with the Chicago Cubs. And, you know, for Major League Baseball, to me, it's just about timing. You know, and, and I know the, the players are dug in. And what I mean by timing is this, is I don't care if you're locked out, you know, in December, in January. It doesn't bother me. No, you know, I'd love to see more player movement, obviously, but that doesn't bother me. What would really hurt Major League Baseball is if this lockout affects regular season games. And even just one game, two games, ten games, whatever it might be, I don't think baseball fans really have the stomach for that. You know, They'll take it right now. Yes, they're a little bit bothered by it right now. Yes, they don't want to hear the stories about billionaires and millionaires fighting over how to split the pie sure. and all the money coming in and And how to separate that money. And baseball's got a lot of issues that we're going to go through over the course of the next couple months in terms of, you know, play, uh, uh, you know, player movement and also competitive balance within the sport and the regionalization of the sport. But right now, the lockout, we knew it was coming. We know there was never going to be kind of a deal because there's no leverage for one side. Right. Timing is going to come into play here. And who has the stomach to be able to sit and wait it out, whether it be the owners or the players' side? The players are coming off of CBA, the last one, where they feel like they got screwed over, and it was a bad deal. Yeah. To me, it comes down to, do you affect the regular season? If you affect the regular season, it's going to be another knock on Major League Baseball in a sport that can't really afford to have many knocks on the sport. Yeah, you know, I'm usually like, you know, get painted as the alarmist around here, and and I am not worried about this. Even if they have to miss some games, you can't miss a season, that's obviously devastating, but say you have to miss 60 games, say you get a 100-game season, right, something like that, the lockout keeps going on and on. Depending on some of the changes that would happen to the CBA, I think you are willing to lose the battle here to fight to win the war. The things that need to happen in this CBA are twofold. You just touched on two of them. One, you need teams, all of them, more of them, to be competitive, to be in it, to be spending money, right? That's the number one thing. Teams that are not competitive, that hurts your sport more than anything. Ask the NBA about tanking. I mean, it is bad. The NFL even gets into tanking at times, even though the NFL like can't be touched. It's not a good thing. You put your fan base through hell. You don't want to have that, and you, and you become irrelevant, right? The other thing is about creating that sort of buzz, right? NBA free agent style buzz, which gets more markets than just the one you're focused on, interested in big-time superstars and where they're going to go and all of that. If it takes a couple games and have to sacrifice a few games to ultimately fix those two problems, then I don't think baseball is going to really miss a beat here. You know, this lockout, I know people don't want to hear this, but it is actually necessary. If you kept going the way you were going with baseball, I think you were going to still continue to find these same roadblocks. Now, I want to add a couple of things on top of it. I'd love a pitch clock. There's a couple on-the-field things. You know, add the DH. A couple in the National League. You know, there's, a, there's on-field things that need to change here in terms of the product. But if you get young players getting to free agency earlier, so basically lowering the amount of service time, and you get more teams having to spend – if you got to miss a few games to make sure you get to that moose, the end of the Major League Baseball is going to going to get through this. This is not as dire as people are making out to be in my opinion. Yeah, I don't think you miss 60 games. I really don't. I, I don't Season's I don't too think, long anyway. I, I don't know about that. I think people enjoy it. I mean, I really do. I mean, I, I think they enjoy the 162 games. I think people think the game is the season's too long because the games last an eternity. Well. And you're watching, and I mean, what are you going to do with relievers? The amount of pitching changes. I understand you got the three batter rule, but a lot of people agree that the three batter rule is completely and utterly dopey. But this is a matter of understanding where your fan base is and whether or not they have the stomach for it because – 
We just went through a period in which teams spent, in the span of a week, eight, nine days, over $1 billion in free agency and bringing players in across Major League Baseball. Mm -hmm. We just had Steve Cohen spent a quarter of a billion dollars on four players as they all got introduced via Zoom yesterday. You know, Scherzer was the first who gets that three-year $130 million deal. You had the Texas Rangers spend $500 million on the middle part of their infield, and fans are going to say, wait, wait, how unhealthy is the sport when you're looking at players making that kind of money, when you're looking at the owners making the kind of money that they're making, even though we complain about how regionalized the sport is, how the popularity has dropped off from where it was at one point in time. You know, Americana, it was baseball, the most popular sport in America. You know, football was second, then basketball was third. Now, football is obviously first. Yeah. There's a chasm to the NBA. Then yeah. there's another chasm when you look at the popularity of Major League Baseball, where you're looking at attendance, you know, across Major League Baseball taking a hit, right? The amount of it costs to go to a baseball game. All of these things that come into play, Maggie, where you look at where this sport is and trying to grow the fan base. I mean, that's really what it is, trying to gauge those young fans, trying to continue. They want the mom and dad to take their pet kids to the game. They want the whatever it might be, the young people going to the games across the sport. You know, are you going to have the stomach to do it? Yeah, Spend but not having transactions after... for the next couple months, is that really going to no, 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 pro no, prohibit about... you from taking your kids no, to a no, game? I'm talking about break? if you miss games in the regular season. I'm talking about if you get this season started in June. If you're going in, if we're talking about this and there's still being a stoppage or spring training is getting going Memorial Day, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a problem for Major League Baseball. I know, but think about it that. That's a problem is. in you're the gonna, short term moves, but think the about it. The 94 strike did irreparable harm okay. and it was brought back based on the popularity of steroid users and their ability to hit the home run. The home run then obliterated the record book, something that separated baseball from every other sport and every other professional sport because people actually cared about the records in Major League Baseball. People don't care about the records in Major League Baseball because we went through the steroid era and everybody celebrated and baseball was all of a sudden back. Now those guys are basically treated like redheaded stepchildren, even though they brought the sport back and made it popular once again with books being written in the summer of 98. Now you mean to tell me we're going to sit here. That's where I think it's all about timing. I don't care about December. I don't care about January. We get into it to where it affects, even if you think the regular season is long, to where you're playing a 100 game regular season, playing 110, playing an 80 game regular season. I don't think there are going to be fans there saying, yeah, let's go, let's go get it. You are going to have another flurry of this sort of free agency signings once the CBA gets agreed to, no matter when that is. So that's going to be the impetus and the popularity sort of rebirth of the sport, get people back into it, right? And that's going to create some buzz before the season will begin. And ultimately, think about this, right? Like, I don't believe that one mom and dad who would have taken their kid to a game in April will now not take their kid to a game in July just because they didn't like the tenor or what, or they didn't like the work stoppage. Like to me that I, I'll just, I will just call BS on that because I, I don't think that's enough to turn people it away people from the off in 94. Yeah. But that was, they missed the world series. There yeah, were but, so many but, but why, but things that, that happened there moves it, that, that were gonna, so much more dire at the time than just missing the first, you know, 60 games of a regular season. But here. let's look at back. If you look at it in 94, they missed the world series. No doubt. That was look devastating at the Yankees for the people Expos where they had the two best records in major league baseball in 94. There's no doubt about it, but it turned people off for years. It turned people off for years. But don't you think that now in the year 2021, first of all, I do think there is more of a you know, people and fans are just more resigned to the fact that, yes, this is a business. And there is a little bit of the rose colored glasses that are off where you realize, even though it's millionaires fighting billionaires, that the business of baseball has to get done. I also believe that they think this could be for the greater good. It could be for the greater good because think about it, right? Like if you have more teams spending money, if you have guys like Aaron Judge who can get to free agency at 25, you know, you have these certain things that can help the game. Again, pitch clock, number one, first and foremost. If you can get these kind of changes made, I think you can make up a lot of ground quickly here. There's another part of this that's different than 94 that I think plays a role. And just like everything else in our society, I think social media plays a role here. We were, I was talking to Pete Hoffman before the before the the show, and he's got kids who are like 11, 9, and 4, right, Pete? 11, 9, and 4. So those are around the same age as your kids, too. We're talking about how devastated his kids are because now the sport's going away, going away, quote-unquote, for the next couple of weeks because they're big Yankee fans. The Yankees can't sign anybody for a while, so the sport's going away. I'm like, right, it is. 
you can still play MLB the show. You can still be connected that way. And you still have social media where if you, if Aaron Judge is putting out videos of him in a batting cage or whatever, you still have, you, the, the players aren't leaving your site. They're still here. You can still be inundated because social media keeps you connected to the individual well, players. It's not going to feel like someone took something from you as much as I think it did in 94. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I mean, that that's great. I mean, that's fantastic, but people want to watch the games. No, I get that, I mean, but the games are going to come back. I mean, I watched – I mean, I can I can watch guys working out all the time. It doesn't necessarily mean – I watched John Wall shooting basketballs uh, the last week, uh, you know, and, and on a practice I know, and people court. say the NBA, all, sudden, all that stuff helps its popularity. No, nah, but I, I get it, but that's – but we're talking about two completely different things. If you're talking about, okay, well, I need to – I need to market my star players a lot better, like make it less regionalized, make the guy in California care about, you know, a, a New York Met and Francisco Lindor or care about what the Yankees are doing at second base like you see in the NBA, like you see in the NFL. Isn't that a different argument than what we're talking about right now? I mean, no, I'm talking about the the, this, how this is different from 94. The, the fan is going to get ticked off. The fan is going to get ticked off because they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. Everybody is going through a lot. They go a lot. They don't want to watch, and and honestly, they don't want to see millionaires and billionaires fighting over how when a guy's going to hit free agency. You know, they're not going to celebrate the fact that a guy all of a sudden, you know, the the work time now all of a sudden gets to hit free agency at twenty five and deem it if you make if you bastardize the two thousand twenty two season. It's just not going to work. I, I don't I don't see one way. I'm not telling you that. You know, the, the the lockout's not necessary. Yeah, I think we all understand there are things wrong right. in yes, Major League Baseball. Yes, the sport would be better for it on the other side. But in the end, in the end, you can't miss games. In the end, you have to be smart enough if you're the owners and you're the players and come to the realization of we cannot afford, our sport is not in the position, popularity-wise, in this country to be able to miss games. I'm not telling you that good can't be done. We get into a lot of conversations about what's wrong with Major League Baseball, more about what's wrong with Major League Baseball than really anything else. We don't do it with the NHL, don't do it with the National Football League, don't do it oh really God, with the NBA. Oh, my God, we talk about the officiating all the time. Well, they, but that's the officiating. I'm talking about the game. Within the game, we get into a conversation about what's wrong with the game of Major League Baseball, too slow, pitch clock, too many pitching changes, all of these things, launch angle, everything, lack of action, the shift, all of these things we get caught up to in talking with Major League Baseball. I think there's got to be a clear understanding, both sides here, and I'm not telling you to put one more weighted than the other, on the owners and on the players that, guys, we really can't afford to miss games. We're not going to help ourselves in the end. We've got to come to some sort of resolution so it doesn't affect the regular season. I can deal with it now. Listen, it's fine. And I could deal with the fact that after this lockout comes to an end and the CBA has ratified that, uh, that there'll be more player movement. I could be frustrated by the Yankees' lack of movement up until this point. I just don't think you miss games. That's yeah. all. Uh, at 60 games, if it is, you still get a 100-game season. I, I don't think you're going to be turning off people in droves like the way you're painting it because there's also, like, nothing will ever get as distasteful as the two sides were during the pandemic. And honestly, the owners were 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 awful during that. Rob Manfred, the owners, were terrible during the pandemic. That was just... There was no bottom. There was no bottom there. And it was, you know, it, like that was, you want to talk about putting your fans through something as the world was, I mean, we still are going through this pandemic, no doubt about it. But like at that point when like, you know, it was really still in the throes of it, how they treated the fans there and how they navigated through that was, oh, it was just terrible. awful, right? But look at the ratings of the World Series. Nobody watched. Well, because also I think a lot of people thought 60 games wasn't enough. 100, no, I think I'm you would look about differently. this past year. Nobody watched the World Series this past year. Well. Nobody watched them. That's not going to get fixed right now. No, I, I get it, but that's the overall popularity of the sport. There were columns being written about how lowly rated the World Series was, and nobody was paying attention to it. Congratulations to the Atlanta Braves for winning the World Series. But nobody was watching it across the country. Because you get into marketplaces, you get in, well, it didn't involve the Dodgers or it didn't involve the Yankees mm -hmm. or it didn't involve the Mets. Like, you know, that's the that's the where your sport is right now if you're Major League Baseball. And just take and note of that. And that's what they're that. trying to fix, though. Even if it takes you a couple games and you have to miss a few, again, keep the bigger, the in my mind, I think keeping the bigger prize sort of in mind will has to be paramount. I mean, that, that has to be first and foremost. 877-337-6666. So here we are. Lockout. Lockout Although city. around here, it's been super exciting. I mean, not so much for the Yankees, most. 
But around here, it's been super exciting. It has. For the Mets. Yeah, we'll get into the Yankees and their uh, pursuit of Freddie Freeman. Elizabeth, New Jersey, we go. Kicking us off here on this Thursday, it's Ed. What's going on, Eddie? Hey, Mark. Hey, Maggie. How you doing? What's up, Ed? Well, all I'm going to say is this. The best thing that happened, and I'm going to bring up my... Is Carlos Correa has to wait to sign a contract. That's the best thing about it. <laughs> wait, yeah. You go because the Yankees have to. Yankee fans have to sweat. No, I don't. I don't want him with the Yankees. I think he's a punk. And oh. what he said. To, what he said about Derek Jeter. He's a disgrace to baseball. Oh. How does that? Say? Not the cheating. I'm strong. The cheating isn't the disgrace to baseball. Is the fact that he that he well, doesn't kiss Jeter's boots. All, all I'm going to say is this, and I want to bring up my lockout point. Okay. I can't wait till they bring up Anthony Volpe. I saw him five times this summer play. Mm. Okay? He, he's very good. And I have him an opportunity right away. Okay, so, Ed, to my point, play. whether the baseball misses 60 games or whatever this year because of a lockout, that will in no way impact Anthony Volpe. Right? We didn't expect that he was going to first year. If they were going to manipulate his service time, they wouldn't bring him up for the first 45 days anyway. But the, that's besides the point and one of the things that needs to change about baseball to begin with. But you're looking forward to Anthony Volpe. Nothing about this lockout is going to change when he would get to the majors. Nothing, really. Yeah, but here's, the, here's the thing about the lockout, okay? Who's going to pay for all these salaries? The fans, okay? Yeah. And no, no, let me. And here's what it is. Mark, you've you got a family, right? Yes. I don't know if you get t- free tickets or whatever, and that's none of my business. How, how, it probably costs you an arm and a leg to go to a ball game. It's ridiculous. You get $12 for a beer. You got to pay ten dollars for a hot dog. It's totally ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm better off paying my dollar ninety eight a month to watch the Yes Network on TV. But to be honest, I can't even stay up that that late anymore. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Eddie, you're, preaching you're, to the choir it there. Does. Right? Yeah, 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 like I mean, no dos to it get co- through a game. Yeah, it costs a ton. I mean, it, it costs yep. a ton to go to games. Um, but that's not just a baseball issue. That's that's really every very every funny sport. too. You'd ask most about his ticket situation, considering he's going to be courtside at the Knicks tonight. I will with Gary. I can't wait. It's going to be great. Not sure if Moose gets free tickets at all, but see on the Jumbotron. Knicks Bulls at the Garden tonight. It's going to be a blast. North Arlington. James, what's going on, James? Oh, yeah, you have a good time tonight. Uh, Thank you, James. So, uh, baseball, uh, and I love this conversation, they've always felt that they're bulletproof. Uh, And, of course, they have that antitrust, which is so complicated. You need 10 lawyers and a a Supreme (laughs) Court justice to explain it. But on the other hand, it, it seems like the regionalization of baseball, which no one can argue with, mm-hmm. but yet they every individual team makes a lot of money because of those 81 home games. And don't forget, oh, let's never forget about the money that's made at concessions. The and the TV contracts. The TV contracts, uh, well, like you, you're giving TV, the regional TV contracts are insane. You're, you're right. providing you're so right. much right. content. And sports and award shows are the only things that people actually watch live. And I don't even know how much we're watching award shows anymore. Sports is, a, is the only thing we still have to watch live. And so that's a premium for advertisers. But the regional money is, is, is beyond belief. And, and, and because of the accounting, they have the best accountants in the world, baseball teams. I mean, we can go into that. I, I mean, uh, I, I, whenever I would come across someone from the Wall Street Journal, I used to always ask them, like, can you explain to me? And it seems like no one can. But the thing is that we also forget how much money they do make on concessions. And that's something that I think that we don't necessarily – I mean, again, we're, we're talk, we, we care about winning and losing in our individual team. But obviously the owners, they care about profit. And the money that a team makes – like you're talking like, like like at the Garden now with these – what Boomer was talking about, the $12 beer, yeah. which, which costs like 50 cents when it comes out of a tap. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the profit margins are incredible. And yeah. baseball is no different. Even some of these minor league teams – can make money if they get enough of fans to come and buy popcorn and peanuts. Like, yeah, James, the concessions, no money. doubt, make a lot yeah. of money. That's why attendance is yeah, important. They, they that's they why rip you the need. Pants off you. There's no doubt. <laughs> that's why you need teams who are competing. I mean, that's you know? the truth. You need teams that are giving your fans a reason to show up, like they're actually somehow you know gonna gonna contend. Yeah, and you have to have the stomach to buy a twelve dollar tap beer. Amityville, <laughs> we go. It's Nick. What's going on, Nick? Uh, good morning, uh, guys. I don't know where to start with how to disagree with what Maggie is saying. Okay. As, as someone, as everybody has gone through the pandemic, mm-hmm. and Maggie referenced it before, how they, they totally showed how greedy they were, the owners. Do you actually think the, the buying public is going to stand for missing games after everything that we've all gone through? 
if the, if the changes are listen, if the changes to the sport are the ones that the union are the, some some of the ones that the union are pushing for in terms of like getting your young players to free agency earlier, making sure yeah, that more teams are spending. Time, ultimately, it will help the sport down the line. It will it, into a much care. greater degree. We don't care about service time for the for the guys coming up. What we care about is having action on the field, and the sport is boring. Yeah, Blunt on the field stuff has to get fixed there. also. You and I were agreeing, by the way, Nick. You're not disagreeing with me. I said the pitch clock is the most important thing they could do, well, in my but, opinion. But, you, know, you just don't, Who's Nick, I totally, I mean, they, they can't miss games. They can't. They can't miss games. Because if you're going to go to games and you're going to tell a father of, of two, of a husband and wife to bring the two kids and the ticket prices are going to go up, that's not going to be acceptable for the average fan. I'm sorry, I just respectfully disagree. Yeah, with but I, what what do you mean about ticket prices going up? Why do you, why would you ever think they're going down? What, what if, if if opening day is in say April first, but it's June first? This is going to turn you off in a way that like I think it what, what makes you think the ticket price is going to be any different? No, it's I don't because the demand would me, be higher. To me, it's not about the ticket prices. It's just a matter of whether or not you have the stomach for it. You'll turn your attention to something else. You'll do something else with your time. And I think baseball There's will, a lot will of get your attention back once the flurry of free agency starts again, once the CBA gets negotiated out. Where's Correa going? Where's Chris Bryant going? You're getting the same thing that we just got last week, which was great for the sport. Guys, you know, so team if spending. That's happening, if that's happening in June. If that happens in May, when, as opposed when to April. we're getting ready for summer, when the NHL Stanley Cup finals are in full, or Stanley Cup playoffs are in full bloom, the NBA playoffs are in full bloom, and baseball's like, hey, guys. We're starting. Look over here. Pay attention to us. Here comes some. Here comes some player movement in May. Ah, uh, I don't know if you're gonna, as opposed to March. Yeah, as opposed to what you count. Well, no, I understand. Yes, as opposed to March. Okay, yeah. but so Bryce Harper didn't sign with the Phillies until February 21st. Manny Machado didn't sign until February 28th. Great. Like all but that's that stuff happens so season. late anyway. I understand. It's not a matter. It's a matter of if you're going to impact the regular season. If you. If you wait and wait and wait, and Rob Manfred could say this morning all he wants, and I saw uh, a tweet from Bob Nightingale that he doesn't think regular season games will be affected. I hope he's right. Yeah, he, he needs to say that. He, and, and I hope he's right because I, I think if you if you affect the regular season, you'll cause damage in the immediate. Now, is there a way back? Yeah. I mean, there was a way back after 94, and they obliterated the record books. And now Major League Baseball shames all those guys, and they're, you know, celebrate Bud Sia, all of these things, but – they obliterated the record books to bring the popularity of the sport back. What would then bring the sport back? You don't have the record books. You can't use the steroid or PED users. What exactly would bring the sport back? Maybe it's competitive balance. Maybe every team has got an opportunity in any singular year to go win a World Series. It would have to be something. I'm just saying in the immediacy, you would cause damage and you would have some work to make up and ground to make up. 1025, Moose and Maggie with you. 877-337-6666, your number to call. Get it going. A little baseball. The lockout, we're all expecting it. It is here. How do you feel? 